guys welcome back to another tutorial by rocky days and today we'll be talking about filters and i'll be starting off uh, with this video i'll be starting off with these filters and today i'll be talking about blurring so how do you blur elements and how to play around with your blurring effects all this will be covering in this tutorial all right so uh, i'll i'll give a brief recap as usual so i'll just go around and tell you what all has been done we have uh, given a script with which we can call our uh, functions which are responsible for uh, changing our shapes and uh, increasing the interactivity we have with our canvas and then we create an id so that canva can uh, act in that division element we give the division element an id and the same id is used over here uh, in the variable when you create a stage and give the container the same id uh the same uh the same value as the id and then you can specify the canvas size that you would like to wish to work with and then we after creation of the stage as usual we create a layer and we have a layer over here which is a variable layer you can call it anything uh and uh, as and after that you create a shape in this representation we have a circle and the variable circle is defined as follows new corner.circle with a capital c and if you see that if i if i give a small c it won't work all right so after that uh, you specify the x and y coordinates of uh, the circle of the circle center so for example i'll give it a uh, 150 over here you can see that it has uh, it has displaced so after that you can specify the radius and i have taken 90 over here and i've given a fill of this value which i got from hdmlcolorcodes.com So it's a great site for you to pick up colors as usual. I've been telling him uh, every tutorial almost. I'll leave the links in the description below. So you, I gave a stroke width of nine and then shadow offsets as we have discussed in the previous tutorials. And there is a shadow blur as well because without the shadow blur, the shadow appears very crisp, and that is not uh, not something which we would want to work with. So I've given a 50 or uh, a value of 50 over here. So after that, we also have an opacity of 0.8, and that gives our element a bit more uh, soft look than uh, than uh, when you don't give an opacity. All right. So over here, I have uh, certain functions commented out. I commented them out so that uh, you can, I uh, mean, I could explain so far. And I'll be starting off whatever. I'm try I'm going to teach you why are these comments uh after removing these comments you'll be seeing a lot of magic going on and that'll be all blurring and no don this guys this blurring is different from the shadow blurring that we do for our shadow offsets all right uh first uh firstly to apply any kind of filters you need to uh remember these three lines and these three lines are over here commented out so what you do is that you give a cache So your circle can be named anything. Let me name it as, uh, let us say, test, test uh, circle. All right. So what you do is that you call your test circle, whichever uh, variable, whichever object you would like to give the blur on, and give a cache command. So after that, you uh, call on the same uh, variable and apply the filters. You invoke the function, and in this you pass an argument: convert dot filters dot blur. All right. So in case it is not blur, in case it is something else, this blur will be changing. But convert dot filters will be the same because that is how convert has been created. All right. The last uh, say, uh, test, uh, the last uh, sentence, the last statement that you would write regarding test circle would be test circle dot blur radius, as you can see below. and you can give any value uh, you want so let us say 20 and after this you're done so let us run it see what happens okay nothing has happened all right guys i forgot to uh, change the circle over here it is this test circle over here all right so as you can see uh, we have a blurred uh, image over here instead of the crisp image that we had before i'll show it to you again so we have this over here and when i add these three statements three simple statements we see that our element is blurred now we can take uh, advantage of these uh, 
powerful filters and we can build our websites in a cool fashion as we wish and uh, one simple way uh, I would like to use them is uh, using the events that we have spoken about in the pre previous tutorials. So what I would like to do is that as you can see over here I constructed this piece of code before. So I would like to comment it out. But uh, before that I have to make sure that I do not, do not forget to change the name of all these uh, instances of circle as test circle. So, so as to not create any kind of uh, discrepancy or errors alright so as, as soon as I change them you can see this working uh, first let me run what I'm trying to build and then I'll explain piece by piece what I'm trying to do here alright so I have uh, removed the uh, first additional lines that we have created in the uh, previous uh, few minutes in the few minutes and <clears throat> now as you can see you have a good object over here uh, though you can't see my pointer I would uh, show you how it will act when my mouse pointer goes on to the element alright so as you can see uh, whenever I uh, change my mouse pointer and position it on to the element it suddenly loses its blur uh, so so as to give a give an appearance that it is getting activated so this is a very pretty cool function that you have to try it out and it will tell the user if at all he has hovered over an element which is in general used by several people so you have uh, common javascript uh, functions that show if, if at all you hover over an element it can give off a certain color or so it can change its font size or anything like that so here I am trying to show that you can do the same for a mouse over and uh, you can make the blur as 0 and then as soon as you remove it the blur radius goes back to the value initial value that we have given alright so I'll explain the code that uh, I, have, uh, I have built over here so I'll remove this and I'll start writing down uh, from start again so as you, uh, if you can remember we uh, build uh, the events code in this fashion we type down circle dot on and then we give a mouse click event you can, it can be anything it can be click so let me show it with click over here and then you invoke a function in which the function uh, the it's a simple javascript function uh, in which you will refer to this uh, this dot element so you can uh, use this function or you can directly refer to test circle but uh, since we are working with test circle, I have to change the name over here. Alright, so we call it as this dot blur radius. So we go and uh, we talk to our blur radius. And then we have to do not forget to add the layer dot raw function. And after this, you're done. So, okay. So, alright, as you can see, if I once I click it, it has got back its original form and the blur is lost I'll play it again so this is the original form and I hover over it nothing happens and when I click so this change happens so similarly you can do something for another click so you can do the same for double click so what happens on a double click function is that you give a function and you set this dot blur radius to about 0 alright sorry uh, to about 20 okay and then you give a layer dot draw and do not forget this guy alright so right now if I double click you can see that it is, it is getting pretty uh, more blurred so with one click it is losing its uh, uh, blur but when I double click it it is gaining back its blur again so similarly you can play around with various uh, mouse events you can create as you like and as the user interface that you are working on requires. So this is how you can use the blur function on uh, in various ways. You can change the double click to mouse out and you can change this value to go to zero or you can uh, and you can shift this to mouse over and you can make it 20 and put it 0 over here 
so what happens is that when you only when you hover over it it will uh, get more blurred so the, these are the ways where you can uh, employ such filter options and we will go uh, and we will talk about various filters in the next tutorials so stay tuned to this and keep watching my videos also uh, I'm on Twitter so you can follow me over there you can follow Anton Labrinov who is the creator of this wonderful piece of code and you can also share and subscri subscribe to my videos it will be amazing if you do that and also uh, share it with your friends so that they know what cool stuff we are going to build in future. Alright guys thanks a lot for watching this is Rocky Day Days bye bye.